Hi, this is Farrell. Welcome to Robot Todd issue 4 cover. And you can see there I did little thumbnails there last, uh, kind of around the time I made the last video, probably the same day. And uh, you can see over there on the right, there's actually thumbnails for the next couple pages too, or the first couple pages of the issue. But this is sort of like my rough sketch. And uh, Fern Fells is that character there, the mouse person. I uh, did a couple different versions of her face, try to get the pose right, and then the fox came pretty easy. I looked at one picture of photo reference, and this is an old thumbnail uh, for like an abandoned project that I used sort of as a base for that cityscape, you know, because I had the idea of using that city in the scene that's coming up in this issue. And so here we can see that I'm just doing different uh, adding more and more detail to the sketch, like revising it, erasing it, kind of going in harder with the pencil in certain areas that I feel more confident about. And like I wanted the fern character and the and the fox, but more importantly the fern character and little pedestal that she's sitting on or squatting on, on her haunches there. Um, I wanted that to kind of pop more and have the background sort of fade, you know, do like an atmospheric perspective kind of thing. And uh, I don't know if the final result was super successful in that regards, but I was trying to keep that in mind as I was like, penciling this anyway, like trying to think, okay, how do I want to approach this color? If you scroll back to the beginning, you can see the thumbnail actually looks a lot different than, uh, I might actually put a little picture within a picture here, because I want, I want to sort of compare the two. But it, it didn't necessarily just get away from me, because I was as I was penciling it, I just thought it would look cooler, I guess, as as a cover to sort of have this cityscape in the background rather than just be like smoke and stuff. Uh, I did like the the simplicity of it, the original. I noticed that like when I used to go to the comics shop, I mean, I still go, but when I was looking for stuff to read, I feel like now there's like so much good stuff that I could pick up. It's almost like hard not to you know, oh, I, I want to grab that, I want to grab that, so, you know, ask the shop owner or whoever, hear about something, or I felt like back in the day when I would go to comics, a lot of the comic covers looked the same to me, and uh, so whenever I do a comic book cover, I try to keep in mind, like, what is something that is going to be striking, something that'll really stand out amongst the sea of, like, bright colors and titles and all that kind of stuff, and I, uh, it's something I think about, you know, when, and when I'm, whenever I'm doing a cover and with this cover, I thought that the big area of like negative space at the bottom. So on the, so basically this is going to be a wraparound cover. So the area on the left with Fern Fells and everything in it, that's going to be the back cover and the area on the right with the title Robot Todd and the little car. I know this goes without saying, but I feel like there's some people that might not think about that when they're just seeing me working on this. So um, yeah, so the, so bear in mind that the, the, what you're going to see on the comic book rack or at the comic shop or whatever, or even in like promotional stuff, mostly will be just the front, the, the right hand side where the, you can kind of see where the seams of the paper is. I, instead of doing this on one piece of paper, which I've done in the past, I decided just to do this on two separate pieces of paper. It's just, I, my scanner actually fits both pages together so I didn't really need to do it to scan it it's just something that I just started doing from the first issue of this where I did them in two separate pieces of paper it, it just kind of helps keep me keep I guess in mind like okay there's going to be a seam here and I can you'll see at the end of the video I did a little photoshopping to, to marry them together so if you want to do like if I want to do like a print or something of the cover I'll be able to do it as like one piece without there being like a big line in the middle but just just for practicality's sake and just for my own satisfaction, I just do it on two separate pieces of paper. But the what I was saying before was that the uh, so the right hand side, the cover, the actual front cover, I should say, I'll, I'll delineate them like that: the front cover, back cover. So front cover is on the right, back cover is on the left. And the front cover, I wanted that whole area underneath, rather than just doing like a close up of this car coming. I wanted it uh, the bottom part of the of the drawing to be a lot of negative space and then as i was working on it i actually wanted there to be a lot of negative space all around the car so i just my original idea for the thumbnail was just having this little car be in the center of the page and then have all this other kind of like smoke and clouds and like just 
scorched earth surrounding it. So you're just kind of, I just goes right to this little, the title in the car. And as I was doing, adding all this little, little stuff to it, it kind of, I feel like it kind of got away from my original, you know, the, whatever thought I had about doing this, but I wasn't upset about it or anything. I just kind of went, went with it and thought like, well, this is just sort of how the, the, how it feel, this feels right to me as I'm, I'm working on it. But I still was trying to keep that in mind of like, okay, I still want this to, to be the basic, same basic composition as the original. And another aspect to this too, is that all of these covers, except for the, with the exception, I guess, of the first one, I, I wanted the covers to feel like they're pages in the story. So, cause they're, when eventually I collect this into a trade, you know, I want to do this as issues. Well, I don't know if that's going to happen, but hopefully it will. There'll be the covers to the issues, but when the trade comes out, when I do a trade collection, I want chapter breaks, but also be part of the story. So rather than just being like, okay, this is the fourth chapter, I wanted it to be like, pick up where the last issue left off and basically starting this issue with, this is basically like page one, you know, and also stand alone as a cover or a chapter break, what have you. So uh, right now in the video, you can see I'm just doing color washes after color washes. This this took me a while. It felt like it took me a little longer than a normal page does, but I didn't really have to do any dialogue or any that kind of, you know, the lettering. I mean, I did some lettering, as you can see right there, the brain again and the uh, North Gate and the little, on the, on the ground, there's a thing that says wide road. And that's a direct reference to the previous book or uh, issue three part three when they're making plans to meet up fern's gonna meet up with todd and and sept uh she suggests that they meet there the part that is usually takes me the longest when i'm penciling these pages generally is if there's like a lot of dialogue and i have to figure out how i want to phrase things and i'm revising it as i'm a lot of a lot of cartoonists or uh, a lot of comic books are made assembly line where you have a writer and an are you know and a uh, penciler and inker and all that kind of stuff a letter but when you're doing it all yourself i mean you can do it however you want it's just a matter of you know how much work you want to <laughs> revise or whatever so uh, i i have this all written out in a, a text document in my notes app on my phone as i'm drawing it a lot of times i'm like i don't really like the way this person says this or i, I don't really want this person to be talking at all. Like I want there just to be silent this page. Um, so there's a lot of a back and forth with the, when in the penciling stage and even up to a lot of times when I'm finishing it, I'll leave the lettering to the very last. I'll even make, be making changes. And then I mean, sometimes even after I scan it in, I'll read it. I'm cleaning up the letters. It's like, yeah, I don't really like the way that phrase is done. So then I'll write it out on like a separate piece of paper and then scan that in and then mess with it in Photoshop, get it to look right. I don't know, that's like the biggest, uh, I guess, time consumption part of doing it usually. But with this cover, I didn't really have to worry about that as much. The only stuff that I, I messed with, I felt like that was sort of a pointless delay was the part four thing that you see. I, I changed that, the colors, like I put those initial colors down and then it felt like it was like competing too much with all the other stuff going on. So then I, I muted them. Uh, there, it gets to this weird stage when I'm, I'm coloring a lot of times where I'll lay the initial colors down and I'm like, that looks pretty good, but I, I feel like I could push that a little more, you know, here and there. And then it's kind of like, oh, I did too much of this or too much of that. Cool, if I got to the point with the colors that I could just lay them all down the first time correctly. And just like, that's exactly how I saw it in my head. And this is, you know, I guess that's why some people do like color studies before they go in and paint. But I'm, I've just always been kind of a fly by the seat of my pants kind of person. And I feel like I'm in my 50s now. It's probably too late to change. This is how I do it. There you can see the part four part that I was talking about underneath the bot. And I knocked down the colors a little bit. So that's the, the finished page the first time. And then that's the rescan after I, I colored that car and touched up a couple things. I didn't like the way that looks. Then I photoshopped that seam out of there. And there's the finished guy. And these are all my books. If you want to go to so Feral Books, bigcartel.com. And I have a Patreon, $2 a month. You can read all these pages. Thanks for watching the video. Bye.